Pocket 2 Islands cast is very unique, shall I say. It's a very unique cast for several different reasons. For starters, it's the only cast in Total Drama to have just one season. I mean, let's take a look at every other generation of characters. The first generation cast is iconic for so many reasons. They are all much more realistic characters built off of popular reality TV and high school stereotypes, and they had four seasons. The second generation cast is not as good, but they were still realistic enough with a few exceptions that were starting to veer into one no flanderization. But yet, they got two seasons. Now, let's skip the third generation really quick and let's look at the fourth generation cast. This is the cast from the reboot that takes place 15 years later in the Total Drama universe, and this cast is a way more normal take on teenagers and reality TV participants. The cast isn't too weird or completely out there, but there aren't that many egregious stereotypes either, and they have two seasons. And now we can go back to the third generation cast. This cast, like I said, is very unique. To put it lightly, all of these characters are complete weirdos. I mean, they're genuine oddballs across the board, and yes, I include Sky and Jasmine too. They were total stereotypes of random things taken from pop culture, and they just didn't seem like they could be real people or even real teenagers in high school. And they only had one season. They never got their own action, world tour, all stars, or the island reboot season 2, whatever they call that. But yeah. People like the shit on this entire cast because of how weird it is, and I mean, I think that's fair. Realistically speaking, it's a cast full of people you never see on this kind of show, but as Total Drama got more kid-friendly, started to run out of reality TV and high school stereotypes, and leaning far into the zone of flanderization, this is the kind of cast we got. However, I actually have a soft spot for this cast and this season, and I prefer them over the second generation cast and Revenge of the Island. When I first started getting involved with the Total Drama Phantom Online, it was around the time of the lead up to Pakatu Island, so the season has a soft spot in my heart. But this cast only had 13 episodes to do just about anything, and if you guys have seen some of my previous videos, I am a big hater of 13 episodes. I get that it's a network thing and there's not a lot that can really be done about it, but 13 episodes will just never make a season reach the heights of any of the first three seasons. It just can't happen. But at least with the second and fourth generations of characters, they have two seasons of 13 episodes. They got that extra time devoted to them for more development, and whether or not you like or hate those seasons, Pocket to Island's cast never got that kind of treatment, and honestly, they probably never will. Pocket to Island's cast is completely isolated from the rest of the Total Drama characters. We've seen characters from the first and second generations interact plenty of times, and there have been even cameo appearances in the reboot, so even the reboot cast has had some sort of interaction with the first generation. Pocket 2 Island's cast is on a complete island, and they are staying there, most likely forever. So we'll never know what they could have been like if they interacted with the other casts, or if they had another season just for themselves. Until now. Because I'm going to try to figure out what could have happened if they had a second season. What are some things that could have happened in Pocket 2 Island but didn't that could happen now? Where could some of the plots and relationships from the original season go if they were on a second season? Let's take a look and figure out what could have possibly happened. So, a seventh season shortly following Pocket 2 Island, pretty much in the same vein as Action. Now, I have no idea if they would have just gone back to the same island again despite its hazardous issues, or if they would have found a new location, but I don't think it's really that important. What is important is if Dave is actually alive or not by the time of the next season, because the last scene of Pocket 2 Island is Dave right before he's about to be mauled by a bear. I think we'll just go with the universe where Dave miraculously survives and he's just rocking up bald the next season. Although, now that I think about it, starting the next season with everyone else just rocking up to the island and then stumbling upon Dave who's still been there the whole time would be hilarious. And Scarlet should probably be in prison for what she did on Pocket 2 Island, but we'll just say that Chris and Chef bailed her out with some of the network's money because they needed her back for another season. I can just see Chris thinking this cycle will be ratings gold, so we don't have to worry about her status going into this season either. Nonetheless, all 14 characters are alive and not in jail, and will compete in the second season. Now, for the teams. There really is no proper way of determining this because there's so many different combinations of teams you can do. I might pick certain teams, but then there'd probably be tons of you out there in the comments with your own teams in mind, so it'd be a mess to figure out what the teams would be for the next season. So, we're just going to randomize that to decide the new teams. Hey, 
It's not me deciding them, so you can't be mad at me for what these teams look like. But first, we need team names. So here we go, random animal generator. Let's find out what animals these teams are going to be named after. Jellyfish is one of them, and giraffes are the other. All right, so we have the... You know what, we'll workshop the names in a bit. Mm, let me see, let me see. Okay, the Jurassic Jellyfish and the Giant Giraffes. Great team names, all right. Now, who's on each team? And we're going to find that out right here on ChatGPT. Um, I'm probably just gonna keep making it randomize the teams if there are an even number. So, if there are an even number of gender on each team, so. We'll just keep randomizing until we get that. But yeah, let's find out who's on the Jurassic Jellyfish and the Giant Giraffes. All right, and I think we have our teams. The Jurassic Jellyfish are going to be Beardo, Sammy, Topher, Scarlet, Max, Sky, and Sean. And the Giant Giraffes are going to be Leonard, Amy, Rodney, Ella, Dave, Jasmine, and Shooker. So now let's figure out how exactly this season would play out with these teams on a second season with this cast. Now, we have our teams and we can officially begin looking at how this season would go. First off, just on paper, the giant giraffes are absolutely getting smoked. Team Musquawk was already in bad shape, but now Leonard, Ella, Dave, and Sugar are back together. The Jurassic Jellyfish actually look like a pretty solid team, besides the fact that Scarlet and Max are back together after what just happened, but I bet they'll be fine. Probably not though. Okay, so here's some of the plot lines that I think would happen here. First off, Dave and Skye are not getting together. I know she probably would have broken up with her boyfriend by then, and that she liked Dave, but after seeing the way he reacted and stuff in the finale, she was probably taking back everything she felt, especially if he was still rocking that atrocious cut, or if he was bald. Dave can have a mini meltdown in the first episode, complaining more about his teammates, try to throw Sky off her game and fail, and then be the first person voted out. Simple as that. Sky is focused on the game, while Dave is focused on, I don't know, getting revenge I guess, but Dave is going to be too caught up in it and it's going to get him voted off first. Sammy and Amy being on different teams is actually really good and I'm glad that's what happened. I think what they each really need is to be separate so they can do other things besides just hate each other. For Sammy, I think after finally standing up to Amy last season, she's going to be a lot more confident this season. She's going to be able to be more outgoing and start making some of her own friends on her own and making her own decisions. I think Sean is an easy friend for her because of their connection through Jasmine, and I think Sky is another person that she can get along with, but there's one person on her team in particular that she's going to get along with that'll be major, and it's Beardo. I'll get back to that in just a second though. For Amy on her team, Obviously, there's going to be a rivalry with Jasmine because Jasmine was the only other person on Bakatu Island that hated what Amy was doing. I do think it's a good idea for Amy to make it at least to the merge portion of the game so that Sammy can get Amy out and be able to say that she got Amy out, and this time it wouldn't be in secret. She'd be wearing that badge loud and proud. Realistically, Amy could manipulate people on her team such as Leonard and Rodney and get them to do her bidding, but there's also the relationship between Leonard and Sugar. In this universe, we don't know who Tammy is yet, um, unless Leonard even mentions her, but right off the bat, Sugar and Leonard are a thing. Sugar has shown that she's capable enough to be strategic and screw over others such as Skye, but I think with Leonard around, she'll go along with what he says because he is a wizard after all, so he has a trusted opinion. So, you're looking at an alliance of Amy, Leonard, and Sugar, with Ronnie as an extra number just in case, but he probably gets dumped off at some point when Amy tells him she isn't interested in him. That leaves Ella and Jasmine on the outs, and unfortunately, barring a team swap, they would be the next two to leave the giant giraffes after Dave. For the dynamics on the Jurassic Jellyfish, I already said that Sammy would probably be friends with the likes of Sean, Sky, and Beardo, and I see them all being at least friendly with each other too. Scarlet and Max are definitely not friends, and I can't imagine Scarlet being seen in a positive light by the rest. And then Topher is also there, probably trying to figure out a new way he can host Total Drama or host some other show that could replace Total Drama. Unfortunately for Topher, his entire character is based around wanting to be a host, and there's just not a lot that can be done with him. 
For Scarlet, I think because of her intelligence and the threat of being in prison for a long time, she'll try to make it up for her teammates and they'll want to keep her around because she's easily smarter than all of them and they'll need that for certain challenges. For Max, he'll probably try convincing others to become evil like him and get rid of Scarlet and He'll probably be pestering Beardo to be his new sidekick and replacement of Scarlet, but I think realistically, Topher would be the second boot of the season. His team would already be over his antics and Scarlet would want to keep Max around just to toy with him for a little longer before completely ending him. Now here's the thing with Topher. I think he has no other choice but to be an early boot, but because he wants to be a host so badly and just remain on the show, Chris and Chef are going to award him with the job of intern for the rest of the season. It's like when Dakota begged to be on the show despite being voted off, so they just made her an intern instead of actually putting her back in the game. Now, Dakota's dad was paying Chris off for that, and I don't think anyone in Topher's life is doing that, but I can see this as a way for Chris and Chef to torture him for their amusement. Now, I said earlier that Sammy and Beardo would become friends, and that I will come back to that one. One of the biggest stories for this entire second season that I've already had in my head for a while revolves around Beardo. As we all know, Beardo was a human soundboard and he can do the craziest sounds. Seriously, it's a very impressive talent and I think he was being very disrespected in Pocketo Island. Fans often compare Beardo to B because he doesn't talk, but there's a very key difference here. B just never talked at all and when it seemed like he finally was going to talk, it didn't happen. But with Beardo, we've actually heard him speak on two different occasions. We heard him speak in his audition tape by stating rhythmically that he's a shy guy who doesn't talk until he feels comfortable around people, so until then, he makes sounds. And then, when he was voted off in the first episode, we heard him quickly shout out how he enjoyed meeting the people on his team as he shot out of the cannon. So, we know Beardo can talk and we know what is stopping him from talking, so here's the story. Beardo was going to become comfortable with people over the course of the entire season and then finally actually speak. I think Sammy is a perfect choice because she's also looking for new friends, especially since she isn't on the same team as Jasmine, and as I said earlier, she's going to be much more confident and outgoing this time around. As a shy person myself, most people I've befriended are way more outgoing than me, and that kind of balance is key because two shy people can't really get together anyway, otherwise, what's going to be done? So, as Sammy becomes more confident and wants to make more friends, she's going to befriend Beardo and try to figure out all of his mysteries, if you will. Long story short, they're going to become, like, best friends, and by the time it's late in the season, Beardo was going to be fully talking with everyone left. I believe in the character Beardo, and I think he should have gotten a much better treatment in Pocket to Island, but since the writers couldn't do it, I'm doing it right now. So, we've established some major team dynamics with some alliances, friendships, and relationships, and yes, that last one refers to Jess, Sugar, and Leonard. Sean and Jasmine are also separated, and thus this weighs a bit on their relationship. Not to the point of breaking up or anything, but to the point where their hearts aren't as in it, and as we know, Jasmine is likely an early boot on this. So, so far we have Dave leaving first, and Topher leaving second, but sticking around as an intern. Next would probably be Ella. I think in this scenario, Amy wants to get rid of Jasmine, but Sugar, who still hates Ella, threatens Amy about leaving the Alliance and leaving her behind if she doesn't do her this favor of voting for Ella, so then Ella would be the third boot. Next, I think the giant giraffes would lose again, and it seems like Jasmine would be the easy vote here, but let's just wait a second. Rodney is also on this team and is taking orders from his queen, Amy, which makes him fall in love with her, but he makes some sort of fatal mistake in whatever the challenge is. Rodney would then try to apologize to Amy for his mistake, but also he would profess his feelings for Amy. However, this is where Amy would tell Rodney straight up that she isn't into him and doesn't want to date him. Now, you know Rodney would be super upset. He'd probably be crying and throwing stuff around, saying that Amy needs to leave because she's so cold-hearted. Rodney would probably also be wondering if his mistake is what made Amy reject him, and in the end, it'd just be an easy vote for Rodney, sparing Jasmine for another day. Yes, Rodney would be the fourth person to leave two seasons in a row because of his failures in the challenge. As much as I would love to have Rodney stick around until the final two, it's just not realistic for him or for his character, and yeah, he'd be stomped out by Amy. Now, who would be next? Well, let's head over to the Jurassic Jellyfish and see Max get voted out. By this point, Scarlet would have tortured him enough and would have deemed it the right time for him to be voted out, and well, the rest of the team would see Max as pretty useless and just get rid of him like that. Nothing too crazy to dispute here. Now, here's where things get a little messy. Topher's an intern, but he has it out for his past teammates because they voted off 
I don't know, the best looking guy in Total Drama history, which is probably something you'd be thinking to himself. Topher knows all about drama and what brings in ratings, so he decides to rig the next challenge in favor of the giant giraffes and make sure that the Jurassic jellyfish lose. But when they lose, what happens? Scarlet would logically be the next to go, but no, she isn't. So who is? Well, the part of the challenge that Topher rigs is something that Sky is supposed to do, and she's an aspiring Olympian, so, you know, she can pretty much do anything. So it's a big shock when she actually fails at, you know, whatever this is. Topher then tells Scarlet that she's the only one with the brains on the team, and from there, she knows her work in getting Sean and Sky to turn against each other. She tells Sky that Sean is furious with her for screwing up, and she tells Sean that Sky is still upset about him winning a million last season over her. And when it comes to Sammy and Beardo, well, I did make it a point earlier to mention that Sammy would probably be friendlier with Sean than with Sky, and she would be on that side along with Beardo, so Sky would be voted out. We're down to the final eight, but only one more person can leave before it's time to merge. Here's what happens here. Sean knows that if the giant giraffes lose, then Jasmine is definitely going to be voted out, so Sean does the unthinkable and throws the challenge to save Jasmine. Scarlet is the main one who is furious about this and chews out Sean for doing it. Sammy and Beardo are also a little uneasy about it, although Sammy does find it really cute of Sean to do that for Jasmine, but in the end, Sean honorably leaves. I'm not saying he quits or anything like that, but he knows he sealed his fate by doing that, but now, Jasmine is still in the game. He already won and split the money with her, but now it's her time to become a winner, and he did that for her. And hey, it's merge time. The final seven is here. Amy, Sugar, Jasmine, Scarlet, Sammy, Beardo, and Leonard. There's the two alliances of Amy, Sugar, and Leonard, and Sammy, Jasmine, and Beardo, which leaves Scarlet in the middle. So the big question is, what does she do? <laughs> well, nothing actually. By this point, Amy and Sugar have been butting heads a lot as both want to take charge in their alliance, and as seen with the Ella and Jasmine debate, they've been at it for a while. During the challenge, they fight over which one of them should win immunity for their alliance, but it doesn't matter because Sammy manages to win from just under their noses. The alliance completely blows up and Sammy gets everyone on board to vote her sister off, and once again, Sammy gets her sister out and gets farther than her. Also, something else that's been happening this entire time, Scarlet has actually been getting close with Beardo and thus, Beardo has been talking to her just like he has with others such as Sammy or Sean, but Scarlet uses this to her advantage. She blackmails him to do whatever she says or else she's going to shut him up permanently and he won't be able to speak, make sounds, or even like beatbox anymore. And he's already been so comfortable with speaking that he doesn't want to go back to not speaking, so he feels like he has to follow Scarlet's lead. Also, seeing what Scarlet did last season, he knows that she's capable of anything. This all leads to when Scarlet, Beardo, Leonard, and Sugar vote off Jasmine at the next challenge, leaving Sammy distraught and seemingly alone. But not quite, because Scarlet is very intelligent. Leonard often tells tales about his wizardry and the different crazy things he's done, but he also mentions a woman by the name of Tammy for the first time ever. It's one of the first few times Sugar has heard of a Tammy, and Scarlet decides to use this to her advantage by making it seem like Tammy is actually Leonard's real girlfriend back home, and that Sugar has been kept in the dark by this cheating wizard. Sugar completely blows up, and Leonard tries to explain to her the truth, but she just can't take it. Sammy wins immunity because she still feels like she's the next to go, and she's extra motivated, but with the rumor of Leonard being a cheater going around, he's an easy vote off, and Sugar is delighted with it. Yep. I'm just like a typical Total Drama writer who will set up a relationship and have them break up right after. Tough. So, we're going down to the final four now. Scarlet, Sammy, Sugar, and Beardo. Now, there's no more votes. It's just who's good and who's bad at the challenges. Well, for the next challenge, it's sad to say, but it's Sammy who finishes in last actually. Scarlet and Sugar both know what's smarter for them if they team up against Sammy and Beardo who by this point are super close. And you know, despite the blackmail, Beardo still regularly hangs out with Sammy, and Scarlet feels like she has to either just get rid of him or to get Sammy out of the picture. So, Sammy's out next. And now, the final three. You know, whatever the final three challenges, Sugar finishes in third. <laughs> yep, she is third place in back to back seasons. Look, if Azigo can be first voted off in two seasons, there's no reason why Rodney can't be fourth voted out in two seasons, and why Sugar can't be third place in two seasons as well. I know, it's sad, but it had to happen. So, we now have our final two of the season, Beardo and Scarlet. So the question is, who wins? <laughs> well, both. Because, you know, Total Drama is two innings. Okay, but 
the for real, the official winner of Pocket Two Island Season 2 is Scarlet. Look, Beardo had his amazing, heroic story throughout the season where he became comfortable enough to make friends and speak to them and he went from first boot to finalist. But Scarlet was the main antagonist who went from prison to the finale. She had to overcome everyone hating her for what she did last season and she still manipulated people, turned people against each other and used whatever she could because of her intelligence and because she has no remorse for other people's lives. The main antagonist of the season is the official winner of the second season of Pakatu Island and that's how this lovely season ends. Oh man, when I tell you that I came up with all of that on the spot, I'm dead serious. Except for the Beardo stuff, but that's because I've already thought of that when watching Pakatu Island. Right after getting those randomized teams, I wrote out all these ideas for the season in one single sitting. It's basically the same thing I did for my own All-Stars cast, but this was much more random than that, and I had to think of a lot of things on the spot because of the randomized teams. At first, it's really not easy to just start thinking of ideas and where you should actually start, but once you get into it, there's just no going back and you're just thinking of more and more ideas. So please don't take any of this super seriously and get all upset that this person didn't get that far and this person didn't win and this person, that person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if I had different randomized teams then this would have played out differently, but I stuck to my integrity and produced something totally random and on the spot in one sitting. So hopefully you enjoyed this second season with the Fox 2 Island characters. Maybe I should do something like this more where I just randomize teams and create a season from there. I'll have to keep that in mind, but let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this season and what else you'd like to see me make videos on. Let me know what you think of the Pocket 2 Island cast as well. Like the video, subscribe for more videos, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching.